for today's video we're going to take a look at a Munro LN160X mechanical calculator made somewhere in the 1950s. The introduction you've just watched will have been recorded at some point in the future but for now let's have a look at the Munro as it came in to me for repair. There should be a handle on the carriage here for lifting it and that's been broken off and there's also a screw missing on the case here. If I flip it over to the underside there's a foot missing at the front here and the rear feet are meant to pop up when you press this lever and at the moment they're stuck down because the right hand one is bent. Also there should be rubber feet on these rear feet so that's another thing I've got to fix. Moving back to the front of the unit and the carriage shift lever is working fine but the carriage reset is jammed and the main mechanism is jammed and if you ever find one of these that seems tight or jammed don't try and force it because that's the best way to break them. Uh, on top of that some of the numbers aren't latching properly that 9 doesn't latch properly and the 4 over here sticks down and doesn't pop back up when you press another key so there's a few things to look at so the next thing to do is to take it apart. The first thing to remove is the carriage itself. There's a little circlip under here that I've already removed which allows me to remove this rod which holds the carriage in place. And with that out it should be fairly simple to remove the carriage. There are five screws, or in this case four because there's one missing, that hold this cover plate on. So we'll take those out. And that should allow us to take the cover off. I'll just clean some of the dirt off from between the keys before I go any further with the strip down. and that should do that. And then next there's four screws to release on the bottom which should hopefully allow us to get the mechanism out of the case. Aha yes the handle will have to come off first probably. So with the four screws removed from the underside there's a little release lever here that allows you to take the handle out and then I should be able to remove the mechanism from the case like that. First glance at the mechanism and there's brown gungy old oil on the shaft of the handle and all these drive gears here are really solid with old dried oil and grease. So my first job is going to be to go through the machine, clean out the old oil and replace it with fresh stuff. Okay, I've got all the gears here lined up with their alignment marks because you don't really want to get them misaligned. I could take the circlip off this one. And there's a washer and another washer or shim and yeah the grease on this has gone really solid because that's quite reluctant to come off okay I'll get that one cleaned up right that's the first one cleaned up so we'll get it back on with the alignment mark in position I've re-lubed the shaft back on with the two shims and on with the circlip just the rest left to do now Okay that's that lot cleaned up and already we've got a bit of movement in the thing so 
definitely an improvement. Okay, quick progress report. Everything is now cleaned and oiled. And we have a fully working lower mechanism. Next, to have a look at the register itself. Okay, there's nothing immediately obviously wrong with the register. All the wheels are free, there's none of those stuck. But the reset handle is still solid. It could just be that the oil in the bearings here has gone thick and old and won't let the handle turn. I don't necessarily need to strip it all apart to fix that, because usually applying a bit of heat will cure that. And for that I'm going to use Penelope Pitstop's hairdryer. This is actually sold as an embossing gun for card making and crafting and the like. In the old printing world this used to be called thermograph, but uh, now they call it embossing. Anyway, I've actually got this thing for shrinking heat shrink tube because it's really controllable. You don't heat up the whole area and you don't set fire to it either. So we'll apply a little bit of heat. and already we've got a bit of movement. Right, so I should now be able to get a bit of oil in here. And once it's moving, that should free off quite nicely. job done. I took the decimal point markers out because there was some surface rust that needed removing and now I've got the fun job of putting them back in. I've put the first two back in so we'll uh, probably run this at high speed. Excellent, job done. Okay, quick progress report. Having sorted out the carriage, I've cleaned all the case and cleaned all the number wheels and the machines back together and ready to give a try. So we'll do 2347, 2347 multiplied by 456. So in the far column we'll do the 6. And then we'll do the 5 and then the four. 
giving the answer 1,070,232. I'll demonstrate the machine a bit more thoroughly once I've done the feet because I've still got those to replace. OK, quick project update. We now have some rear feet. I didn't think I'd be able to find any to buy, so I've moulded some using Sugru. I've not used this before, but it's a mouldable rubber that cures once you've taken it out of the packet. It takes about 24 hours to cure, and yeah, we have some rear feet. And for the front feet, here's the original one that was on the machine, and this will be the replacement. I've actually cut some discs of rubber bottom two with a small hole for the screw to pass through and the other three with a bigger hole um, so the head of the screw can sit in them. I'll glue these together and once they're glued together I'll profile them to the same shape as the original and it should be a reasonable facsimile. And the final foot update, this is the new foot that I've just made and this is the original one. They look similar enough and it sits quite level so that's job done. I think this video has gone on long enough, so I'll save the demonstration for part two. I'll put a link to that in the description when it goes live in about a week's time. If you've enjoyed watching, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. There'll be more vintage stuff and repairs coming soon. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.